Avionics. Avionics, okay. GNC. GNC is go. Vicon. Vicon is go. T1. T1 is go. GC. GC is go. PLS. PLS is go. RSO. RSO is go. Met. Met polling for go, no go. Coming back later to Met. RF. RF LD and mission code. RF is go. Thank you. MM. And then this go. And Met. Met is go. LD sub. LD sub is go. The go. No go sequence is now complete. We are T minus 11 minutes and 50. Locks load is complete. System is in recirculation. Anti geysering is disabled. Stage one, stage two, press for flight. High purge, flow, engine purge enabled. Deluge activated. minus 19 seconds and counting. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And that is a beautiful liftoff for Electron. The final two Tropic satellites are on their way and coming to a storm near you. With Electron now having cleared the pad, the next milestone is Max Q. This is the point where the forces on Electron are at their greatest. So we'll listen out for clearance of that key Electron moment from Mission Control soon. Max Q. at Max Q. And there we have it. Electron has passed through Max Q and continues on the way to space. Right now, Electron is travelling at over 2,000 kilometres per hour and is at an altitude of 20 kilometres. Now, coming up next is main engine cutoff, or MECO, where the nine Rutherford engines on Electron's first stage shut down to make way for separation between the first and second stages. Within seconds, the single space-optimised Rutherford engine on the second stage will ignite to carry the kick stage and the Tropic satellites all the way to orbit. That should take place shortly at around T plus two and a half minutes, so let's listen in to that call from Mission Control. Stage one propulsion still nominal. Please stand by for me on roughly 30 seconds. Fifteen seconds to Miko. AOS at Chenham Station. Entered burnout detect mode. Two 
and Miko confirm. Stage submission. And just like clockwork, we have had Miko, stage one and stage two separation and ignition of electrons second stage. Coming up very shortly, we'll also see electrons fairing separate and fall away. These two carbon composite halves form a protective nose cone over the tropic satellites, keeping them safe during ascent. Once we're in space though, they're not needed as the forces on electron are not nearly as great. So we can get rid of them and clear the way for payload separation. Now, for this mission, because we're headed to that 550 kilometre circular orbit straight away with stage two, we're leaving the fairing attached just a little bit longer than usual. That jettison event should be coming up in the next 20 seconds or so. And that's fairing separation confirmed. We are at four minutes into flight now and coming up next is a process unique to Electron, battery hot swap. The pumps on Electron's Rutherford engines are powered by Electron pumps, which draw their energy from batteries. Once we deplete the batteries, they are dead weight that we don't want to carry all the way to orbit, so we eject the batteries and swap over to a fresh set in flight. That milestone is coming up just before seven minutes into the flight, so still a ways to go yet. So far for today's mission, we've had a perfect liftoff. We've cleared Max-Q, had a good first stage burn and separation of electrons first and second stages. Fairing has also separated as planned and now we're five minutes into the mission. So far, a nominal mission for coming to a storm near you. The second of two dedicated launches to deploy a storm monitoring constellation for NASA. Stage two propulsion is still holding nominal. Guidance is nominal, 200 seconds remaining. Now we're coming up on that all important battery hot swap. Powering engines with batteries is one of the things that makes the Rutherford engine special. The single stage 2 engine requires a longer duration than the stage 1 engines, so we have to hot swap the spent batteries to a third fresh one. This is one of the final gates to orbit, so let's listen into the operators in mission control for that call. And there you have it, a clean hot swap for the second stage Rutherford engine. 
Electron continues to orbit with around two minutes remaining in today's Stage 2 burn. Speed is good, altitude is good, Electron is good, T plus seven minutes into the second Tropics mission for NASA. Just in time for the Atlantic hurricane season commencing at the start of June, these two CubeSats, along with the two that we launched just 18 days ago, will provide members of the meteorological community with hourly returns over the same storm to more accurately predict patterns which could save the lives and livelihoods of millions of people. T plus eight minutes in, and we are now around 30 kilometres away from that 550 kilometre target orbit. As George mentioned in the video earlier, this stage two burn is taking us all the way to a circular orbit. Then we have that dog leg inclination change just over the equator to put us in the correct plane for payload deployment coming up at 33 minutes into the mission. Electron is continuing well at speeds of over 19,000 kilometres per hour ahead of SECO and kick stage separation. SECO stands for second engine cutoff and you'll know when the second stage completes its burn because the nozzle glowing bright orange on your screen right now will turn back to grey as it cools down after the engine shuts off. Immediately after that shutdown, an electron's kick stage separates from the second stage and in around one minute the Curie engine will ignite and begin that plane change manoeuvre ahead of payload deployment. Again, mission control will call out these actions so let's listen in for confirmation of SECO. Seco confirm. Stage three separation confirmed. Nominal transfer orbit achieved. And that is Seco confirmed as planned. The kick stage has also cleanly separated, ready for that final Curie burn in around 20 minutes from now, followed by payload deployment at T plus 33 minutes. Because this final burn and deployment of the Tropics CubeSats happens in a ground station blackout zone, we won't get live confirmation of those milestones. We also won't have live video footage of the deployment process. So here's a quick animation to show you what will be happening in orbit just 25 minutes from now. And that today's mission is yet another success. The kick stages Curie engine performed well, positioning the Tropic satellites at a 30 degree inclination for deployment. We have confirmation that the satellites have separated cleanly from their deployers and are now settling into their new homes on orbit, ready for the 2023 storm season. Congratulations to the launch team and to our mission partners at NASA. The Tropics constellation is officially on orbit. We are so very proud to support this important mission and grateful to be entrusted by NASA once again to deliver mission success. So with that, we're going to close out today's live coverage, but don't forget to follow Rocket Lab and NASA on social media for more photos, videos and additional detail about today's mission. And to follow along NASA's Tropics mission now that all of the spacecraft are on orbit, you can head to blogs.nasa.gov forward slash small satellites. Thank you so much for joining us. This is Rocket Lab Mission Control signing off. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on the notification bell. Thanks for watching. Space Google Viser YouTube channel. Avionics. Avionics. Okay.